Of all the long stories I know, this one's probably the longest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into pieces. Probably at least three or four. Uh, three at, at least. Um, five is right out? Hmm? Five is right out? <laughs> uh, could be. I don't know. Is the Federal order State. essential? Hmm? Is the order essential? Or, I mean, uh, the order is, as it turns out, yes. Yeah. Be sequential, though. Like a lot of very long stories, this one is Russian. Uh, Russian stories like the Russian winter seem to go on virtually forever. And this is a very famous Russian tale called The Tale of the Triplets. And it starts with this peasant farm uh, uh, man and wife whose names were, let me see, uh, Ivan and Ludmilla. Why are so many people in this part of the world named Ivan? Because it means John, that's why. <laughs> now, Ivan and Ludmilla, Ludmilla were okay. poor farmers, but they worked hard. They helped their neighbors. They went to the church, well, as often as was practicable. And they had everything in their lives to be reasonably happy with, with one exception. And that is, try as they might, they could not have children. And they accepted this as good Stoic Russians often do. And then one day, Ludmilla is in her kitchen and she feels something rub up against her ankle. And she looked down expecting it to be one of the kittens which were always underfoot. But instead, there at her feet was one of the little people. And she at once became alarmed because the little people would often live beneath people's houses and cause all kinds of mischief. But the little man looked up at her and said, do not be afraid. We have been watching you for these months past and we've decided that you are very good and noble people. So what I have just done is I have imparted into you part of my magic. Tonight, when you lay with your husband, you shall be with child. And that is exactly what she did. And lo and behold, that is exactly what she what happened. And the pregnancy grew and grew and grew and became larger and larger. And when finally the day of birthing came, she had not one, not two, but three boys, identical triplets. Um, Ivan had to do some hasty modification to the cradle to make them all fit. <laughs> and it was quite a chore, but they, as usual, carried on. And it was some weeks later, while the children were quietly sleeping side by side in the cradle, that Ludmilla once again felt a uh, tug at her ankle, and she looked down there is that little person again who looked up at you and says, uh, Ludmilla, it would appear I have done you somewhat of a disservice. It seems that I may have given you a bit too much of my magic. So we have made a decision that to assist you, we are going to give those three children each a gift. I see that there is a long thread hanging from your shawl. Please unravel it and give it to me. And so Ludmilla did this. And when she handed it to the little man, he hopped up on the chair next to the cradle, held out the string, and it magically fell apart into three pieces. And she said to Ludmilla, take the longest piece and tie it around the first child's head. Take the second piece, tie it around his wrist. And the third piece, tie it around the third child's ankle. And she did this. And the little man said, you must leave it there until the day of their christening. And as they grow older, you will see that they have some very interesting abilities. So time went on and eventually 
the three children grew up. Now, the one who's, who had this string tied around his ankle became known as Swiftfoot, or almost as soon as he could walk, he began to run. And he could run as swift as the wind. And he could run all day, apparently, without tiring. The one whose, whose string was tied around his head became known as Keen Eye because he could see small details at a distance that other people could barely make out anything at all. He became an expert archer, and with nothing but a stone, he could knock a squirrel out of a tree at a hundred paces or more. The one whose string was around his wrist became known as Clever Hand. He had a most interesting ability for whatever tool, whatever device he picked up, even if he had never seen or held such a thing before, he at once became an expert in its usage. The three of them became, well, over time, quite useful around the farm. But of course, eventually they grew up, and from children they became young men. And as the way is with young men, they decided that they wanted to go out and adventure. Now, Ivan and Ludmilla knew better than to try to command them to stay at home, so they made them give this promise. The three of you go out and have your adventure and make your fortune. But when you come back, when you have done this, I want all three of you to come back here and help us in our old age. And they agreed to this. And one of them went to the east, and one went off to the west, and one went to the south. Being good Russians, they knew better than to go north. So, I will end this part by telling you about the one who went to the east. And that was Swiftfoot. He traveled far to the east, and eventually he came upon the border of a land that we now know as China. And there he saw a number of soldiers camped out, and they had with them built a corral for a number of wild horses. And so Swiftfoot approached them and, and asked them, what are you doing? And, and they said, well, we have been commissioned to capture all of these wild horses for our emperor. Uh, it has been a very difficult task. And Swiftfoot said, well, perhaps I can help you. And the soldier said, that's interesting. What, what is it you would need? What, what would we need to do? And he said, you need to do nothing. Simply give me several lengths of rope. So they provided him with this, and he swung these lengths of rope over his shoulder. And the next morning, they went out looking for the herd of horses, and they spotted one in the distance. And Swiftfoot turned to the Chinaman and said, you, you wait here and watch. And he took off running towards the wild horses, which of course saw him coming and immediately ran in the other direction. Did not bother him in the slightest because in but a few moments he was running in the midst of them. And one at a time he took the ropes off of his shoulder and he wrapped one around the neck of one horse, letting it trail behind. And then he moved to another horse and did the same and another and did the same until a dozen horses all had ropes around their neck trailing behind them. And then running back and forth between them, he grabbed the end of the ropes and he tied them together. And the more he did this, the more the horses started to pull against each other. And finally, all dozen horses were standing in a circle, trying to pull in different directions, getting absolutely nowhere, until they tired themselves out completely. And then Swiftfoot walked into the center, grabbed the point where all of the ropes had been knotted together, and led them peacefully up to where the amazed soldiers were waiting. And they said, do you do this often? And Swiftfoot said, I can do it as often as you wish. 
And so over the next several days, he repeated this process several more times until their paddock was filled to the brim with horses for the emperor. And now the soldiers said to him, we have sent word of our exploits back to our capital city, and we have received word that the emperor wants to meet with you. So they escorted him back to the great city, and he was brought into the presence of the emperor. And the emperor said to him, you have done us a great service. I have heard of your exploits and your abilities. Would you be willing to stay here and become a member of my court? Someone with your abilities could come in quite useful. And Swiftfoot said, I am honored by this, but I have made an oath that once I have had my adventures and made a fortune, I shall return home to help my parents in their old age. And the emperor nodded in understanding because in the lands of China, there is no greater onus upon any child than to care for their aging parents. And so the emperor rewarded him with a small box full of precious stones and carved jade. And now Swiftfoot headed back home. Now as to the other two adventures, I will leave that for the next time around. That was part one.